Hey, my name's Jason. I'm gonna give you 28 Pro iPhone camera tips in the next 28 minutes. Let's go. Traditionally, iPhones have really struggled taking macro photos or videos. No matter what you try, you just couldn't focus down to anything close to macro. But the latest iPhones have switchable macro mode that's actually really impressive. To enable macro on iPhone 13 Pro and newer, navigate to settings, then camera, then at the base of the menu, tap on macro control. If we now switch back to our camera view and I grab this little starfish decoration here, you can see that the macro icon turns on as I bring it close to the ultra wide lens. Now we can focus down to just two centimeters to capture intense detail. Of course, tapping the macro icon will also turn the function off and on as desired. Macro mode switches automatically in video mode, so you'll see that icon on screen nice and easy. You can also use macro in time-lapse mode, but only if you switch to the ultra-wide angle lens. And same for slow mode. Select the ultra-wide lens, lock your focus nice and close, and hit record. The effects can be truly stunning. Tell me, have you ever been unsure about if or how you can change the video settings, the video record settings for your iPhone? Let's navigate to our iPhone settings, look for camera, and then select record video. This menu displays selectable video resolutions as well as corresponding frame rates. There's a handy file size comparison table and below that buttons to enable PAL frame rates along with stabilization, low light, HDR and other creative choices. Now when we're back inside video mode, in this top right corner you can see a selection of your available video resolutions and frame rates that you can simply toggle through whilst inside the camera app. So you won't need to navigate your way to the camera settings each time to change those. Next to video mode, you'll find cinematic, a soft focus video mode. Above the shutter button, you'll see the available lenses. Let's switch to a camera view to show switching those two lenses, in my case, a three times tele and a one times wide on this plant shot. To keep the foreground leaves in focus, a long press on those leaves will bring up the autofocus tracking box, which will stop the focus drifting to other movement within the frame. Cinematic mode will also happily work with your iPhone selfie camera. Hello. The top bar also gives us access to some additional manual controls. Tap on the drop down arrow and a new menu appears. The middle button gives us access to exposure control so you can over or underexpose the shot. Here's how that looks in practice with our plan. To the right, a button gives us access to aperture control, allowing us to select how soft we want that background focus effect to be. I personally find f4.5 to be the sweet spot for most of my shots. Back inside the camera view, controls selecting your available video resolutions and a range of available frame rates will display in this top right corner. Beside those, the current shooting aperture is displayed and a tap on that will also open up your aperture control. And if we visit our camera settings, enter preserve settings, and then turn on exposure adjustment so it turns green, we can now navigate back to our camera view and in the top left hand corner, we'll now have quick access to a handy exposure control slider. And this will now be accessible there for all of your different camera modes too. Now pano or panoramic mode has been around like forever, but I bet I'm about to show you some things about that mode that you never even knew were possible. When we fire up pano mode, we see the white arrow pointing left to right along a guide bar. But did you know that you can simply tap the arrow to make it start from the right side? I know, that's a game changer for your panoramic compositions. You should always long press on the brightest area of your composition to lock your exposure before starting a pano. This will keep your colors consistent as you pan around through light and dark areas. You can also switch between your different focal length lenses to go from ultra wide, wide, right through to tele as well. I normally stick to my wide angle lens when using pano mode. Most people take a pano photo by pressing the shutter once to start and then another tap to stop. But you can also start the pano that way and then simply tilt the phone up or down to end the shot. It's also possible to long press the shutter for the desired duration of your pano image. Vertical panos are also possible. Just rotate your phone around and tilt up or down for the duration of your shot. Above all, experiment, have a play. You know, panoramic mode is full of creative surprises. 
By default, our iPhones are factory set to take photos in four by three aspect ratio. But did you know you can change that setting too? Tapping the very top arrow in photo mode will reveal the photo settings. Tapping on the 4x3 button will then reveal three framing options. This is 4x3 standard photo framing. This is 1 to 1 square framing. And lastly, this is 16x9 widescreen crop ratio. That last example of 16x9 framing, same as what we're using here in video, is really handy if you are shooting videos that you want to use full screen in a video presentation. Because if you shoot them in 4x3 aspect ratio, you get the black edges left and right. That looks pretty ugly. Now, of course, we all know tapping the photo shutter will take photos, but did you know a constant press on the same button shoots a quick take video? Quick take videos are always HD resolution at 30 frames a second. Alternatively, press and swipe right to lock the photo shutter in quick take video mode and then press the red button to stop video record and return to photo mode. And you can also use the side volume buttons to tap and hold for another way to access quick take videos. Have you ever gone out, taken a beautiful photograph, say of a landscape or a sunrise, sunset, you come home, you look at it and your horizon is just kind of wonky. There's an inbuilt tool inside your iPhone's camera software that not many people know about, but it'll really help you level up your shots perfectly every single time. To switch it on, navigate to your settings, then camera, and here you'll find a function underneath composition called grid. Turn it on so it goes green, and then return back to your camera view. Now you'll have two horizontal and vertical guides overlaying your camera view. These will help keep your horizons and edges level, plus the grids encourage you to use the age-old principle of the rule of thirds, which is a compositional rule where we try and align our focal point along any of the lines or at their intersection. In addition, when shooting down horizontally, the grid lines also show white and yellow crosshairs. Aligning those perfectly means you'll be looking exactly straight down. Very handy for flat lays or those foodie shots. Since Apple released their iPhone 14 range, we have a brand new video feature to work with called Action Mode. Now, aside from your iPhone's sensor-based image stabilization, Action Mode is actually a digital effect that's applied to your video file after it's been shot. Now, a common mistake people make when they're first shooting with Action Mode is they're judging it by the live camera preview. It doesn't really look any different to a regular video, so don't judge it by that. The effect gets applied to the file once it's saved to your camera roll. On playback from your camera roll, well that, my friend, is where you're gonna see the full impact. In video mode, you'll find the action mode icon in the top bar. A simple tap will turn it off and on right here. The icon may appear on either the left or the right side of the top bar, depending on what other camera controls you have turned on in your camera settings. In this demonstration, I'm filming Megan running without action mode on, so we have some kind of idea how the base video mode would capture this motion normally. Now, let's do that whole thing again with action mode turned on this time. I'm sure you'll agree the softening of the camera shake is actually quite impressive. Interestingly, Action Mode uses the iPhone's ultra-wide lens by default, but you can quite happily select either the wide lens or the telephoto lens as well. The stabilization effect works strongest, however, when using the default ultra-wide angle lens. There's a quick way to access some options in the camera app. Here in the top right, you can toggle between your video capture frame rates, and next to that, you can select either HD resolution or a hybrid 2.8K ultra-high resolution too. I see so many iPhone users zooming into a composition in video or photo mode doing this, spinning the zoom wheel, or worse still, pinching and zooming. This is a highly imprecise way to zoom because more often than not, you just end up enlarging the pixels digitally rather than using the inbuilt optical lens choices you've got available to you. This iPhone 14 Pro has a wide lens, an ultra wide lens, and a tele or a zoom lens. So get in the good habit of zooming in and out using those optical lens taps. Your imagery is gonna look far better because of it. Remember those really cool SLR cameras, the vintage SLR cameras with the big motor drive that would stick on the bottom for that pew, 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 rapid fire photography mode. Great for sports photography. But did you know your iPhone also has its own rapid shooting called burst mode? 
Sure, you can fire off multiple photos by pressing the shutter button each time you want to, but watch this. Dragging and holding your shutter button to the left enters burst mode, saving a whole sequence of rapid fire stills. In your camera roll, a burst image will show as a little stack of images, or else you can see your burst images under media types inside your camera roll too. When you open up a burst sequence, you can tap select to go through and review each image and decide to keep just one, a few, or maybe even the whole sequence. It's entirely up to you. Live photo mode has literally divided an iPhone nation. Some people hate it, other people love it religiously. Every live photo on your camera roll has captured one and a half seconds before and after you press the shutter. This means that you have a number of added functions available to play with. You'll see the mode is active when this radiating circle is present in the top right of your camera view. Tapping this turns live mode off and on. Every time you press the shutter in photo mode, the live panel appears at the top of screen. To find your live photos, open your Photos app and navigate down to the Live Photos media type. In here, you'll be able to select any photo you've captured in live mode. I'm going to enter into edit mode now to show you how you can select from a range of photos within the sequence. Tapping the live icon brings up an image timeline with a current selected photo framed in white. If I scroll my finger along this line, I can select any shot within that three second sequence and make that selection my new key photo. All the other images are still saved within the live file. I can turn off the live mode in the same edit window just by tapping the live yellow panel at the top. Now because live photos have video and audio as well, we can access this drop down menu to select from a number of different effects, including loop, which as the name implies, will loop the sequence from begin to end, Bounce, which plays the sequence forward and then in reverse, stitched together. And then there's long exposure and off. Tapping the circled ellipsis in the top right, you can scroll down to Save as Video, which will actually create a short three second video export to your camera roll. Particularly useful if you'd like to share a live photo as a video with a non iPhone user. Portrait mode takes an everyday scene and turns it into this gorgeous, beautifully layered, softly focused masterpiece. Now I'm just demonstrating this here sitting at my desk, so there's really not much depth <laughs> to play with, right? But bear with me, this is about showing you the functionality. There's gonna be some pretty pictures soon. Tapping the drop down arrow will reveal our functions palette. Here we have our flash settings, next to that our exposure slider, where we can choose to manually over or underexpose the frame, depending on the scene. Then in the middle, there is a timer option. Next to that is our available filters we can shoot with. And then on the end, our aperture or depth slider, which goes from F16 to F1.4. F16 simulates a very sharp aperture where lower apertures reveal the soft layered focus that portrait mode is loved for. Switching to the tele lens, we can see the depth effect more vividly. Here, a setting like F1.6 gives us maximum foreground background separation. My personal preference usually leans more towards f4.5, and if we just pause to review those, this one's the first shot captured at f1.6, followed by the second photo at f4.5. To me, that looks more natural given its computational imaging creating the focus layering, not optical lensing. And if we visit our camera settings, enter preserve settings, and then turn on exposure adjustment so it turns green, we can now navigate back to our camera view and in the top left hand corner, we'll now have quick access to a handy exposure control slider. Tapping the top right F symbol then brings up your aperture or depth slider control too. Do you find there's a handful of images in your camera roll that always happen to be rotated the wrong way? Well to fix, tap edit, then this lower crop tool. Then tap the anti-clockwise rotate icon until you've achieved the correct orientation for the image. The base palette also offers a rotate tool with a slider control and a handy vertical skew tool, plus a really helpful horizontal skew tool, which is what I'll use in this example to straighten the perspective shift on this framed illustration. I can also recenter the image just by clicking and dragging. When you're happy, tap done and your image will be saved to your camera roll with those edits in place. Have you played much with slow-mo on your iPhone? Now, a lot of people that have realize slow-mo is a great camera function, but not many people realize there's two different slow-mo settings you have access to. If we navigate to our settings app, select camera, and then select record slow-mo. 
In this menu you'll see that there's actually two different slow-mo speeds, 120 and 240 frames per second. To compare, this is what normal video capture looks like, and this is what the same video captured at 120 frames per second slow-mo looks like. At 240 frames per second, action is slowed down 800% and you can really see every movement in detail. When in slow-mo mode, you can select 240 or 120 at the top right of your camera view with a very quick tap. All right, it's really important to understand how to switch your flash on and off to prevent those unintentional flash activations. If I tap the arrow here, we'll open up a settings palette and you can see the flash symbol, just tap on that to open. First, you'll see flash auto. This mode will auto activate your flash in low light settings. Next to that is on. When we have our flash turned on, flash will activate every time you take a photo. And you'll notice there the flash icon stays yellow in camera mode to show that it's on. Turning the flash setting off means you're going to need to manually turn your flash mode on and off by tapping the flash icon in the top right of your screen. Flash mode is available in portrait, photo, video, cinematic and slow-mo capture modes. Now in any video mode, flash is going to activate in low light unless you tap it off. Personally, I prefer to leave my flash setting turned off and only activate it when I know it's needed. Fingerprints, dust, dirt, skin cells, every camera's nightmare. Just take a look at my hand as seen through my smudged iPhone lens. That's actually disgusting. A quick wipe with a cloth or any clean fabric you're wearing and presto, instant lens resurrection. Cleaning your lens every time you pull it out of your bag, your purse or your pocket is the only way to ensure your images are clean, sharp and well contrasted. And while I think of it, don't forget to clean your selfie camera as well. I get asked a lot about my go-to settings for photos on my camera roll and whilst it's true that there's fantastic third-party apps out there that offer very deep, very granular creative controls, I find there's an edit mode already in my camera roll that I apply to most of my favourite photos that I just use time and time again and I want to share it with you now. Now I'm opening up a poolside shot here, if I just go in and tap edit, I generally will always try the magic wand auto enhance setting first because it gives everything a big lift and then I always play with the brilliance setting. It brightens the dark areas, it pulls in the highlights and adds a little crisp contrast at the same time. Now if I just turn it off and on again, you can see the instant difference that the brilliance function makes all on its own. Interestingly, brilliance is the only one not available when you're editing your videos. It's only for photos, but don't let that stop you, it's fantastic. Rather than scrolling mindlessly, getting in the habit of creating album collections can save your sanity. Let's do an album together with a sequence of photos of myself and my daughter Evie. If I select the shots that I want to keep together, then tap the export icon in the bottom left here, I'll get an option to add to album. If I tap that, I can create a new album easily, giving it a name or a title that represents the image collection. Now, when I go back to albums, there's my newest album right at the top and tapping it will display just those shots. Now that is nice and easy to find. Uh, we've all been in that position where you're taking a group video selfie or a photo with the back lenses on your phone and you can't quite guess where the shutter button is on screen, right? Because it's facing away from you. Well, here's another way. The side mounted volume buttons provide another alternative, as pressing either of these will also happily activate your camera's shutter. This function will also carry across to your video modes too, turning the volume buttons into side mounted shutters that can easily start or end video recordings. Super useful as I said if you can't see your screen for recording. Did you know your iPhone selfie camera actually comes with a crop or an expand setting built in? Let me show you. If I just fire up my camera here and I switch to my selfie camera, hey there goofball, can you see this expanding arrow in the circle here? Well, tapping it will allow your field of view to expand slightly for group selfies and then tapping it again crops it in tighter for shots with just one or two people. Now the selfie, crop, expand button, whatever we call it, only works in photo mode. Okay, so video selfies, you don't have it, but for photo selfies, it's there. And once you know it's there, I'm sure you're gonna use it. I don't know about you, but I've literally lost hours of my life searching and scrolling for moments or videos of photos that I know are inside my camera roll, but I just keep scrolling past them for some reason. One of the fastest ways I know to search for images inside my camera roll is using people or places. 
places is my go-to because often dates will escape me, but knowing where I was when I captured something has far more recall for me. I'm going to zoom in on this map to look for a series of photos that I took recently inside a Sydney park. You can search very wide or very granular this way. Once located, I can see I've taken 16 images in this location and tapping is going to reveal them using the file's metadata. People is another great search tool as it's going to show you the most commonly captured faces inside your camera roll. Now if I tap on my son's face here, his name's Artie, it'll show a summarised album of all the image and video types where the AI has detected his face. At the top I tap show more and it'll reveal all the image files within the summarised collections so I can do a detailed search for a particular photo or video file. This one's super handy for locating your friends and family members. And don't forget you can always search by media type as well. Everything you've got in your camera roll is here. Videos, selfies, live photos, portrait mode, long exposure, panoramas, time-lapse, slow-mo, cinematic, burst sequences, screenshots, screen recordings, even raw files. If I look at my panoramas, for example, these are all the pano images that I took on this phone. And under selfies, I'll find every image captured with my iPhone selfie camera. Media Types is a great backup search option as well. The lens you choose to capture video with has a great impact on the audio pattern that's going to be collected with that video capture as well. Now here's a little demo video that I captured last week. I had a bit of a longer beard, a bit scruffier then, but bear with me. This will show you how different the sound sounds from each of the three lenses on my iPhone 14 Pro. Have a look at this. Believe it or not, ever since three lens iPhones came about, your video mode captures sound very differently depending on which lens you've selected to capture video with. In the default wide-angle lens, which is what we're using right now, this is the sound pattern that the iPhone's microphone will record. But listen to what happens in contrast when we start filming video with the ultra-wide-angle lens. We can see a lot more, but we can also hear a lot more. So the microphone pattern is changing. It's actually picking up sound in an ultra wide angle. So all of the distortions, the echoes, the reflections that are bouncing off the walls are now coming into the microphone too. By contrast, recording video with a tele lens will give us the cleanest possible sound using the inbuilt microphone. Now this is because Apple has engineered the very one same microphone in between those three lenses to behave in three different ways depending on which lens you're filming with. So to recap, this is what video captured with the ultra wide angle lens is going to sound like. This is what video and audio captured on the wide angle lens sounds like. And lastly, this is what video captured on the tele lens will sound like. How about that? Three different video recordings with three different lenses using the same microphone but quite different sound reproductions. Who would have thought? I personally love editing my images within my camera roll, but you know what? It's really good to know that at any stage I want to revert back to the original, I can. Reverting image edits is easy. Just navigate to the photo or video, click edit, and in my example here you can see a number of image edits I saved with this photo file. For this demonstration, I'm going to take all the colour saturation out of the shot and save it. Now a lot of people would freak out and go, no, what if I wanted to in colour again one day, or one month, or one year later? Well, we can. Just tap on it, enter edit mode, and then if I navigate to saturation, I can just dial that back in again. Thankfully, all those granular edits we make to images within our iPhone's camera roll is, is just metadata. So effectively, it's non-destructive information. Have you ever been sent a photo and it's got these little hand-drawn markings on them? Well, that is really super easy to do. Let's begin by finding a photo in our camera roll that we'd like to mark up. Select edit. Then in the same top right corner, tap the pen tip tool. This brings up the markup palette. Here you'll find a pen, marker, pencil, eraser, lasso and ruler. I'm selecting the marker tool to demonstrate and I can tap the color selector here, select the color, close that and return back to my marker tool. Tapping on the tool allows me to vary the color's opacity and the nib size as well. Then it's as easy as drawing with your finger. At the top left, there's undo and redo buttons and of course, when you're finished, you tap done top right and then tap done bottom right to leave the edit mode. Adding a caption to an image in your camera roll is going to make it super easy to find when you need it. Select the image, swipe up and you'll see the add a caption field. Start typing a helpful title or a description in here, something that's going to help you recall that image in the future. Simply tap done to save. 
The caption is now saved with the other metadata on the file, such as the date, the time, and the location of the shot, plus the settings that the iPhone has used to capture the image. From this we can see it was photographed with the main or the wide camera. It's a 12 megapixel file, 2.3 megabytes in size. It was shot with an ISO of 1000, an aperture of f1.78, and a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. Now rather than scrolling endlessly through your camera roll for that hero shot, you can simply type your image caption or parts thereof in the search field to quickly and easily locate that special photo. If you use your iPhone's camera as frequently as what I do, there's a really helpful feature within your iPhone that lets you save your most commonly used camera settings so you don't have to reapply them every single time you open up your camera app. Here's how. If I love shooting portrait photos in high key light mono as an example, I can preserve that setting as a default. So next time I switch to portrait mode, that light mode is already active. To enable this, navigate to settings, then camera, then preserve settings. In here, you'll find a number of handy options you can individually select according to your shooting style and preferences. Turn on or off what works best for you. If we return to our camera view now and select portrait mode, Notice how the light mode setting that I selected previously is already dialed in. That's how you can save a bit of time, save a bit of headspace, preserving your camera settings so you don't have to reapply them every single time you fire up your camera app. You know what it's like. You spend all this time doing image edits on one particular file and you just wish, you dream that you could just copy and paste them to a whole range of edits in an album, right? Well, you can. So take your time to complete those individual file edits, make sure everything's looking just the way you want it to. Click done, and then go to this ellipsis and select copy edits. Next, you can return to your camera roll, select all those images that you wish to copy the edits to. Now you can do this by dragging your finger across the selection or you can tap individual files. Next, tap the circled ellipsis in the bottom right, select paste edits, and watch those exact same image edits being applied to the entire selection. What a huge time saver that is. Now a quick tap through those shots will show the edits applied to each individual shot as per the first. When you are in video record mode, have you noticed the little white button to the right? It's a stills photo button and tapping it saves photos to your camera roll whilst you are recording your video. It doesn't interrupt your video recording at all and it's a great way of capturing stills alongside something you really want to have recorded as a video. Now you can capture both same time. If I navigate back to my camera roll now, you can see a video file and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven still photos right after it. So just think the next birthday party you go to, if you're the one that's in that cherry position of capturing the shot when the birthday candles get blown out on the cake, you don't have to decide now, do I capture video or do I capture stills? Because you can do both at the same time.